Hi, my name is Carissa Brown, and this is a policy brief outline on improving diet to curb the prevalence of diet-related non-communicable diseases in the United States of America. Diet-related NCDs include obesity, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes mellitus, and cancers. Studies show that dietary habits are one of the leading causes of death and disability, with an estimated 700,000 deaths annually in the U.S. Data taken in the U.S. between the years of 2016 and 2017 show that heart disease is the main cause of death in the U.S., followed by cancer, with stroke and diabetes also being a part of the top 10 leading causes of death in the U.S. What is a healthy diet? A healthy diet includes recommended intake of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, as well as sufficient amounts of protein and dairy and oils. A healthy diet also includes a limited intake of unsaturated fats, sugars, and sodium. Evidence shows that the average American diet lacks the required amounts of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains while exceeding the recommended amounts of unsaturated fats, sugars, sodium, and calories. Data taken from the dietary guidelines between the years of 2015 to 2020 actually show that the intake of vegetables, fruit, total grains, dairy, protein foods, and oils all fall below the recommended amount on the average American diet, whereas the intake of added sugars, saturated fats, and sodium all exceed the recommended amount of intake in Americans. How is, the diet re how is diet related NCDs affecting the economy? Diet related conditions account for fast health expenditures in the economy currently. Cardiovascular disease alone accounts for approximately $200 billion in direct health spending. As a result of this, more laws, policies, and regulations should be implemented at the federal level to efficiently tackle what is now a nationwide public health concern. The total federal spending for nutrition research across all agencies is only about $1.5 billion per year, whereas over $60 billion is spent on medical technology and pharmaceutical research annually. Perhaps more funding should be placed towards research in research towards nutrition and nutrition literacy in an attempt to educate the public more on improving their diets to tackle what is now a major global health concern. Here are some of the government regulations that are currently in place in the U.S. to improve and ensure that there's a healthy diet. The U.S. government has actually recognized that low-quality diets and poor nutrition have been contributing to both the obesity ep epidemic and rise of chronic diseases currently. Numerous policies and laws have been implemented at the federal and state levels to encourage high-quality diets. Two major government agencies, which include the United States Department of Agriculture and the United States Department of Health, have a goal of protecting the health of all Americans by implementing laws relating to food, forestry, and farming. What is being done at the federal level? So the USDA and HHS are obligated to publish dietary guidelines for Americans every five years. In 2010, the Affordable Care Act passed a federal law that requires sufficient nutri nutrition labeling for food items being sold in restaurants and in vending machines so as to ensure that the public is aware as to what food items contain. In 2012, the USDA adjusted the nutritional requirements for the breakfast and lunch programs in schools. And in 2014, the USDA established a healthy food financing initiative to improve accessibility to, to, to nutritious foods in underserved and rural areas. At the state level, there have also been implementation of policies to encourage healthy eating. Urban planning tools such as zoning have been initiated to limit the number of fast food outlets in communities. And there have also been the development of incentive programs to encourage sale of nutritious foods in dalis and bodegas. The following criteria will be used to evaluate 
the recommendations towards improving diet in the US. So the first, the first criteria is at, is at the ethical level. Everyone should have access to nutritious foods that are affordable regardless of income. The question here is, will the recommendations be able to improve access and affordability to nutritious foods for everyone across the United States of America? On the economical level, the high prevalence of diet-related entities is putting a strain on the economy in terms of healthcare expenditure. What is the main question here? Will the recommendation decrease the healthcare expenditure associated with diet-related entities and promote, promote economic growth in the country? The third criteria is public perception. Many individuals lack knowledge on how diet directly impacts health status and quality of life. The question here is, will the recommendation change the public's view on diet and its association with health status and quality of life? And finally, on, at the legal level, how will the law influence the recommendation? What are some alternative recommendations to the status quo? The first one is at the local level. What can be done at the local environment? Policies should be implemented to ensure that every community has access to affordable, healthy foods, Delis and bodegas should be encouraged to sell more fruits, vegetables, and healthy options versus processed foods. Limit the number of fast food outlets in communities by introducing zoning restrictions. We can also promote more fresh produce vendors and farmers markets in food deserts and communities that lack access to nutritious foods. By increasing the number of healthy options in the local environment, we can potentially encourage people towards healthy food consumption thus changing the public's perception of nutrition and diet. At the level of health systems, we can provide incentives to the public and private health sectors to unite to implement programs that can assist with nutrition counseling. Interventions by dietitians, nutritionists, and health professionals are needed to successfully educate the population about the benefits of high-quality diets. At the federal level, fiscal incentives can be put in place towards the manufacturers of unhealthy foods, such as sugary beverages and highly processed foods. Additionally, subsidies can be provided for fruits and vegetables to encourage sufficient dietary intake of these major ingredients. The final recommendation involves fiscal incentives at the federal level. How can this essentially improve diet in the US? Price changes have a great influence on consumer purchase and publicity regarding taxes on unhealthy foods can actually change the public's, public's perception of these types of foods. Low-income populations that often purchase excessive amounts of unhealthy and processed foods due to its cheap costs can actually benefit greatly from this alternative. There's a positive impact where equity and health disparities are concerned here. In terms of economic benefits, the revenue from taxes can go towards national nutrition programs to encourage healthy to encourage high quality diets. Taxes towards the food industry can encourage them to manufacture healthy options and perhaps drive them towards more product reformulation. There's evidence from other countries that actually showed that fiscal incentives have been successful in changing the dietary patterns of individuals. Some examples of successful food taxes around the world include the UK's sugar levy and Hungary's and Mexico's snack tax. These taxes were all directed towards the food industry instead of at the consumer level. By implementing a tax to manufacturers, these marketing companies end up increasing their sale price on items, which further influence consumers to avoid purchase of these types of foods. Additionally, by placing a tax on highly processed foods and sugary drinks, can actually drive manufacturers towards food re reformulation, towards the production of more nutritious food items. The revenue, like I mentioned before, from these taxes can be used to implement nutrition programs throughout the country. To conclude, the high prevalence of diet-related non-communicable diseases is a public health concern globally. Low-quality diets are adding a significant amount of morbidity and mortality from chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes mellitus, and cancers in the U.S. The healthcare costs are rising annually from managing the chronic disease burden in the economy, and medical bills are also responsible for placing a significant financial strain in households around the U.S. 
The main approach to dealing with this involves getting individuals to realize the negative impact that unhealthy dietary habits have on their health status. With the impl implementation of effective policies and strategies, perhaps the chronic disease epidemic due to improper diets may be controlled in the future. Thank you.